Hello everyone, my name is Paulina O'Keefe Anthony and I am honored to be here today to share some poetry with you. Um, I'm just gonna dive right in to my first poem called Reclaiming Tongues. Somewhere over the ocean, my father's tongue was lost. Less lost than washed out, white, white soap and water as if accented tongue was equal to cuss word and one piece of strips. Somewhere over the Caribbean Sea, my father's tongue was scrubbed down to the taste buds, rubbed with Maracas sea salt to heal the wound, let it scab over to speak a queen's English perfectly. It hurts to hear him stumble over his attempts to conceal his immigrant status. One, fool, tree, my sister corrects. Dad, it's three. Oh God. And there it is. A subtle sound, I soak it in, silently mouthing it in the mirror, recording and playback to hear my father's tongue roll off my own, striving for the same authenticity. But if his tongue has been scrubbed, mine has surely been stripped. The faintest traces of the ancestors on my breath, my small but mighty rebellion against a colonized English because no old white crone could ever be more ro royal than me. I searched the tip of my tongue for the same stories my father's held. Of back home and everything that was, I fight to retell them with the same authenticity, anxiety, with pressure to pronounce the places he lived correctly so as not to dishonor his very existence. When I visit my father's land, I tiptoe around the way I talk, trying to tame the tinge of foreign off my tongue, seep my sentences in the authentic speech, coat my words in the sing-song swing that tastes like Julie mango in the morning. But I am always caught. In the crossfire of continental crossings, the accent was dropped along the way as much as possible to assimilate, to forget, to conform to foreign life made harder if you didn't speak English clean, clean. No trace of accent lest some Canadian claim they can't understand you. And what does that leave me with? Faint memories in the way in which consonants and vowels wine with each other back home in the land of Fet. My foreign tongue longs to languish in the essence of an accent abandoned to reclaim it and restore it to the honor it held before it was washed out with white soap and water, as if accented tongue was equal to cuss word and one piece of strips. This next poem is called Black Bodies for Breakfast, and it is dedicated to all the lives of Black men who were brutally ended by police brutality over the many, many, many years. He sat with me, vulnerable, his shoulders slouched over his eyes, hollowed and empty, looking defeated. The news was out. We were having black bodies for breakfast again. Consuming the media portals, he poured out his soul into my cup, nothing but black water, no cream, no sugar, nothing sweet about it. Just bitter conversation about another two brothers who probably wondered if they were going to be next at some point, who probably had the same conversations with their spouses, shoulders slouched over, vulnerable, eyes, hollowed and empty, replaying every unjust encounter they had had with law enforcement prior, wondering if they were going to be able to protect their children from ingesting images of black bodies for consumption through the news outlets, nothing but eggs, bacon, and hashtag names for breakfast. Sipping on salted tears for black men I didn't know personally, but Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, I take your death personally because the person who means most to me looks just like you and the news of your murders has him sitting at this breakfast table just personally broken. Seeing a black man vulnerable and open is a rare sight. I am not accustomed to capturing, but there it is. 
living in snapshotted memory of an expression of hopelessness as it replays over in my mind, reminding me there was nothing I could do to make it better. Nothing I could do to make it taste less bitter going down. Nothing I could do to have never saw it in the first place. Black body are today's lunch hour conversation at my workplace. Friends send triggers through every app I haven't yet deleted. On a week, I tried to detox from the triggers of trolling Twitter fingers, Facebook, and Instagram. I still face images which instantly re-traumatize me. Realize that I don't even have the privilege to simply tune out because it is so in tune, it finds me every single time. See it all through teary eyes, blur my screen, detonating bombs which destroy any peace I have tried to find makes me feel like as a black woman marrying a black man, having black children, it's clear in the society, peace was never supposed to be mine. In every black restaurant, black bodies appear, the side conversation to my main course as CP24 replaces the disturbing content. I inhale it faster than my food, digested and regurgitate stories of brutalized black bodies, my dinner time conversation. Tonight and every night, breaking stories keep replaying from across the border from as far away as the US to as close as Brampton. But black bodies are borderless and so no matter where it happens, it always feels way too close to home. It has perpetrated our tongues and thoughts. It has seeped into the walls of our minds as it sits on the walls of my living room as a Black Lives Matter painted canvas reminds me that we in this house are worth more than what is projected to us from our screens. I cannot avoid conversations anymore about Black bodies at breakfast or lunch or dinner or with my four-year-old daughter who wants to know why all the Black faces on the banner at the protest have to die or future conversations with my son. I practice like reciting a brand new poem for slam competitions in hopes that if I recite it perfectly, he might not be the next conversation piece we have at this table, but I can't guarantee it and neither can he. So all my partner can do is sit there, a black man, vulnerable, shoulders slouched over, eyes hollowed and empty pouring out his soul into my cup. Nothing sweet about knowing it's another morning of black bodies for breakfast. And I've never been someone who could stomach my coffee black. No cream, no sugar. All right, we're gonna switch it up a little bit uh, to some more empowering stuff. And this poem is called Black Woman, You Are More Than. Uh, dedicated to all the strong Black women in my life who I admire. Black woman, you are more than commodity to be bought and sold and marketed and repackaged and repurposed, all purposed for the benefits of everyone but yourself, your own purpose. You are pushed down on purpose, proposed to with indecency inequality, incompetence, any old offer as if they can't see your value, glittering golden off your skin, are they blind? Black woman, you who are deemed goddess once worshiped, statues made in the image of your curvature, your character, your adornments, they sell for cheap, they call you cheap, a slap in the face because they can't afford you. Black woman, worth more than the ship they brought you arms worth weight in gold. They who are so poor, they can only afford to throw dollar bills, but you are more than just scraps to get by. You are destined to thrive, so they do the most to keep you from your destiny, but you will manifest it anyway. And even when they try to copy everything about you, they can't copy your soul. That is something even the devil himself cannot sell. Black woman, you are more than their assumptions, limitations, just a baby mama, just a career woman, just a bitch, just a queen. You are multifaceted, black excellence, fractured by the illumination of your glow, intersectional. You seep into every space they try to keep you out of. You punch through every ceiling they try to keep you down with. They bust through every box they try to force you into. You are laughter in the face of danger because they have stripped you down to nothing. And so you have nothing more to lose, but everything to gain. And so you rise up again and again and again and again at the forefront of protests, behind the scenes of progress, you rise daily. And for this, I salute you. And for this, I stand in awe. Every time we cross paths, our aura sparking for just a brief moment, acknowledging each other, holding each other, both of us letting the other know that we are more than everything they tell us we are. 
everything they tell us we are not, both of us letting each other know that we got each other's backs. And that black woman is all the comfort we need to carry on in this world. All right, so I am going to do this next poem. It's called, Yo, Who Taught You? And it is definitely dedicated to amazing black female poets in Canada. Big shout out to Andrea Thompson uh, for putting me on today. And she's definitely featured in the poem. She's one of those pioneers for sure. Um, this was one of my favorite poems that I think I have ever written. Um, and so I'm very excited to perform it for you all. My tongue was baptized by griots who spit fire that could lick you down right where you're sunny. Melt you with their metaphors melodic. They made my body sway to the sound of the revolution, pulse to the possibilities beyond the prescripted stories that before then had always been told in that grayscale. Flip the script bringing in that technicolor and that heavy bass and that steel pan and that circle drum and all those missing nouns and verbs and synonyms I synchronized with my snaps. They stay reminding me that change was always coming just be on the horizon and I would sip every last drop of their revolutionary tea they served at their parties. Let me tell you that shit was a game changer. My tongue dances to the poetry dipped in dub rhythms and Scotian journey, skating on an oratorio of excitement, listening to Midnight Rubber Queens. It was she, Mami Wata, who be giving me something to stick to my bones, that fire belly, that drum beat that lives in your blood. Her words in turn made me want to try my tongue too, sit slam stages ablaze. She let me know that I was not a fluke and differently still, she taught me how to break up with at least a couple of 416 wastemen who tried to distract me from writing while black. In other words, F boys who were interrupting me coming into my greatness. In other words, her type of poetry saved my life. And it is because of them I am reminded that I am loud because it is rude to underutilize a right that your aunties fought for, that your sisters are still fighting to keep alive and your daughters will fight to carry forward into the future. And when they stare me down, black and woman and poets with eyes that seem to openly ask, girl, who the hell taught you to be so bold? I smile and with the pride of a woman who knows herself answer, Nobizi Phillip taught me, Roma Spencer taught me, Lillian Allen, Afua Cooper, and Debbie Young taught me, Shantae Grant taught me, Andrea Thompson taught me, Truth Is, Rabbit Richards and L. Jones taught me, Motion taught me, Amani Woods taught me, Malika Awiri Brita B and Lamoy taught me, Gemini taught me, Whitney French taught me, Jada Marley, Gabby Cohen, Amoya Ray taught me, Ifra Hussein taught me, Faduma Muhammad taught me, Black women of the word are the ones who taught me, so I dare you to try to top me. Lay you out on white snow with northern bars so black in experience you wouldn't even know how to appropriate them. Black women on these stage bearing souls, not for sale, not for snaps, not for purchase, not for points, not on stage for you. But I feel blessed when you are privileged to bear witness. We are simply supplementing education curriculums that didn't bother teaching us what we needed to know for our own survival. Sister stories are our only shelter sometimes where we weather the storms of the gendered violence received with screw face silence matches your cold shoulder, colder attitude, but mine's always gonna be colder. With a heavy dose of Afro diasporic dialects mixed with a subtle sound of six side slang, the kind that drown you in the otherness, you find it easy to bestow upon me. When you feel like my presence doesn't belong in your oh so polite Canadian context, as if my ancestors asked to be brought so far from home that now we, daughters of the diaspora, struggle to accurately trace our true tongues. I am the product of musical mixology, of wordsmiths who have perfected their crafts, storytellers, sisters who slam, griots of the great black north, godmothers of the original word, blessings to the ancestors who have passed on, but more life to the ones who are still here to pass on the word and word is bond. May we continue to light the path for the next generation with the fire from the bridges we burned that held our carefree black girl magic captive for so long. 
we are finally free to cross over to the other side where the grass is greener, the berries are blacker, the juice is sweeter, and the punchlines hit harder than the racial violence that seeps out of our songs. Stay locked into our memories, scroll down our timelines, and yet somehow we still manage to carry on. And even though we might make it look like it, this shit ain't easy. And when it comes down to our own story survival, it damn sure wasn't easy, but rather it was no busy for Phillips who taught me, Roma Spencer taught me, Lillian Allen, Aqua Cooper, and Debbie Young taught me, Shante Grant taught me, Andrea Thompson taught me, Truth Is, Robert Richards, and L. Jones taught me, Motion taught me, Amani Woods taught me, Malika Awiri, Britta B, and Lemoy taught me, Gemini taught me, Whitney French taught me, Jada Marley, Gabby Cohen, Amoya Ray taught me, Ifra Hussein taught me, Faduma Muhammad taught me, Black women of the word are the ones who taught me. And if you play, pay close enough attention, girl, hmm, we could teach you too. All right. So that's definitely one of my favorite poems. Shout out to all those legendary Black women in poetry who lighted the way. A lot of them lighted the way for me. Um, and some of them are doing amazing things. Actually, most of them are doing amazing things to this day. So I just wanted to make sure that that poem was highlighted in the series. Um, my last poem for y'all is going to be called um, Reclaim Our Own. It is a very old poem, but one of my favorite poems. So I hope you enjoy it uh, as much as possible. When are we going to reclaim what we own? I don't even know. That's why I fight until they get back what they stole. Why is it that we must work harder than the rest to make our issues heard? Is it because of our skin pigmentation or the way in which we dress? Is it because of my last name or because the lands from which we came from are being raped and ravaged Then they dare to label me the savage under average, but from the get-go I knew my civilization had the advantage See, Even in captivity, they couldn't manage us, handed us, branded us with meaningless names. Well. To me, they're meaningless anyways, because I never saw my race as ignorant. Only blinded by our kindness, backstabbed our people and binded us to backlashes and talk trashes and accusations of terrorism, crusades based on romanticism, democratic fanaticism, our cultures lost in colonialism and our nations still struggle with globalism in a globalized world where today when we lose situation. However, they so generously donated to us AIDS, drugs, and alcoholism in a not so fair trade for our land and manpower. They say my men have lost power. They can only gain it back in certain arenas. These blasted puppet masters, I swear today, I cried for my people. My brothers and sisters, I feel you. I see you looking at me in public spaces where my face just doesn't belong. And truly, I tell you, I just don't know. You see, it was easier for me to recognize my unwanted presence when no black signs in the window still showed so bold and so cold. I remember when mosques were still considered holy places and every headline on CNN used with these so-called terrorist Muslim faces. And I remember when the continent, Africa was not the infected, but the infector of knowledge with knowledgeable teachers and down in the Americas, they came with their preachers and now my Latin American brothers and sisters live sad lives with the desire to improve their consequence fighting the past colonial tragedies in the right in the World Bank and the IMF and the left, I'm left short of breath at these situations. But I tend to lose all sense of vital signs when I see my people choose not to fight these systems, but their own nations to the point where they got us eyes wide shut, survival of the fittest, to the point where my brothers think their only options are NBA, BET, the block, I watch their lives diminish to the point where my sisters feel that we are at the very bottom of the class. So just to get by, we skip the thought process and start shaking our ass. And I don't mean to be critical, but these are critical times. See, our survival as a people depends on you, me, and we. So don't let the media fool you. And don't let democracy deceive. Because just because you're not on the plantation no more does not mean that you are free. So where's our place and when is our time i don't even know so i created my own and that's why and why i write my rhyme all right y'all thank you so much for enjoying that poetry with me thank you brickyard thank you andrew thompson for all of this I hope you all have an incredible, incredible time and wish you well.
Peace out. Mm-hmm.